That is correct. We are off to a great start. Greetings, welcome to another Decorative Games YouTube thing. Today we have a, um, a laptop uh, thing, as you can see, from uh, Asus, the um, Rogue Strix G7, sent by uh, Asus themselves, so uh, a thank you to them. We are going to uh, unbox it, uh, take a look at the specs, and of course, that because that's uh, what we do in this uh, channel, we are going to try and uh, play some games, because... Um, why not? I am not a uh, gaming laptop kind of guy, because uh, if I want a game, I'll do it in a uh, proper desktop. But uh, since gaming laptops are a thing, why not check this one out? So uh, let's take care of that, because it is for those who dare. I guess we do dare. And this video is possible thanks to uh, Asus. What is there to say if you don't know Asus? You've probably been living on the moon, which is weird, because even on the moon, everybody knows Asus. They've been around for quite some time. They not only do laptops, but uh, GPUs, motherboards, peripherals, whatever comes to mind when it comes to computery stuff. So uh, thank you very much to Asus for sending this laptop for review. So looking at the front of the box, we can see the Republic of Gamers logo in red and some, some sort of gradient in the box and stuff. The Rogue Strix. And again, for those who dare, we have a handle at the top, which is uh, always handy. And uh, at the back, we have some um, small specs, being the G713 with uh, some info. So... Uh, let us start unboxing this thing. Well, there we go. Inside the box we have a uh, laptop. Ooh, this comes up. Oh yeah, yes it does. I like origami and stuff. So you lift the case and the laptop comes up so you don't have to uh, scratch it out like a cat. So uh, sure, here it is. Let's put it to the side over here. We have nothing. We have a middle compartment. Ooh, paper. Oh yes. You know that I love paper. We have the uh, booklet in search of incredible warranty card by ASUS. We have a, pamph a pamphlet from uh, my ASUS. All you need to know for a perfect experience with your PC. Oh yes. And this is... What, the, what is this? A black and white piece of paper, ooh, with some instructions, so uh, some uh, I.O., what's on the sides and stuff, so uh, yeah, it is 2022, so uh, we gotta take care of trees and stuff, so uh, that's all the paper you get, and on the right side we have uh, some more stuff, obviously, we have a power cord, which is always handy to connect uh, your uh, laptop to uh, your uh, uh, power, I guess. And we get a power brick, because uh, why not? I guess uh, it's cool. So we have a 2.5 amp input and a 200 watt output. So uh, sure, this is a cool AC adapter. I like it. With the um, Asus logo in there. Let me get this in close. There you go. The uh, power brick, which is cool. It reflects in there. Huh, so clean. I like it. And uh, here's a closer look to uh, its specs and serial number and stuff in case you need one. There you go. And of course, you get your power adapter cord. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So we don't have much inside, but again, it is 2022. So you can get all your stuff, your documentation online. Let's we have it. some uh, rubbery feet again, some uh, nice details for those who dare. And over here we have the uh, ROG logo and it says uh, back on top, because why not? We also have the Republic of Gamers again here. Huh. And we have, uh, what, what the crap is this? 1815 06 slash 06 i don't know man what is this 
nutter. So, <laughs> yeah. Looking at the top of the laptop, we have the uh, ROG logo in some sort of a mirror thing. Don't know if this is RGB or not, or if it only lights up, which would be cool. We have again the ROG letters in there. We have a cut. Ah, and the laptop has the same gradient thing as the box itself, which is cool. So, yeah, I suppose we should... Uh, Open this. Ah, little protective thing for your screen. Sure, let's uh, just power it on quickly to see if anything happens. Oh yes, indeed it does. That is correct. We are off to a great start. It is Tuesday, the uh, May 17th, and uh, that's a very cool hour, 1818, because <laughs> Because it is. So yeah, let's take a closer look at uh, our laptop, our specs and stuff. So uh, yeah, because that's what we've got to do. So here we are with our laptop and the uh, first impressions are um, very good. As you can see, at least in my opinion, the uh, aesthetics are pretty nice with some slick lines, some nice details all around with the ASUS and ROG logos and stuff like that. I don't know, I think um, it looks cool. And, uh, well, my eyes like what they see, so uh, I guess that's a good thing. So this is a $1,500 laptop. It is not a cheap one because, well, uh, because gaming, I guess. Gaming laptops are uh, more expensive, I uh, believe. So, uh, yeah, that in mind, in consideration, $1,500 gets you this. And uh, with that being said, you get at the core an AMD Ryzen 7 5800H mobile processor that is a 8-core 16-thread CPU, 20 megabytes of cache, and uh, up to 4.4 uh, gigahertz of uh, max boost being cooled with uh, liquid metal because, uh, well, liquid metal is a trend at the moment, I believe. So um, ASUS wants you to note that it has liquid metal because uh, well it does i don't know if this is uh, better or not for uh, surfacing in the future but uh, well apparently it has liquid metal and asus wants you to know so uh, there it is an amd ryzen 7 5800h with liquid metal if you want to play games on your uh, gaming laptop you have an nvidia geforce rtx 3050 ti or ti the GeForce RTX 3080 Ti is our new... That being the uh, laptop GPU with uh, 4 gigabytes of uh, GDDR6. I have recently reviewed the uh, RTX 3050 non-TI for uh, desktops and uh, also from ASUS. Thank you for that, so uh, sure. But uh, it has 8 gigabytes instead of 4, so... Uh, this will probably uh, make it slower for gaming, obviously, but we'll get into that in a moment. So, uh, sure, your RTX 3050 Ti. To uh, display your games, you have a 17.3-inch uh, 1080p display with uh, anti-glare. It also has a refresh rate of 144Hz, which is uh, cool. Again, for me, uh, it doesn't make a lot of sense to have more than a 1080p display on a laptop, but that's my opinion. But uh, you have all that uh, good refresh rate with 144Hz for some competitive gameplay and uh, some smooth images and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, it is a pretty nice display with thin bezels and stuff. Very good viewing angles, at least in my opinion. So uh, I don't know, man. I think it looks cool. We also have 8 gigabytes of DDR4 running at 3200 with a maximum capacity of 32 gigabytes, which is kind of ridiculous for a laptop, but well, upgrading it to 16 is an option, so uh, there you go. For storage, we have a 1 terabyte PCIe 3.0 NVMe M.2 SSD, that's a lot of letters for some storage. It is fast, it is your uh, regular. NVMe PCIe 3.0, not 4.0, but you have one terabyte to install your OS 
and uh, all those games that you want to play. For I.O., looking at the left side of our laptop, we have two USB ports and uh, one 3.5mm combo audio jack. And looking at the back, we have another USB Type A, a USB Type C, HDMI, a good old RJ45 LAN port, which is very cool to see. If you're going to make a laptop which is thick enough to fit a proper LAN port, just do it. So kudos for ASUS for that. And you have your DC power in. For input devices, we have a backlit chiclet full-size keyboard with um, four independent zones of uh, RGB, which is very cool to see a full-size keyboard on a keyboard again. If you're going to make a laptop which is big enough to put in there a full-size keyboard, just do it. And uh, ASUS uh, did that, which is cool. You have your uh, WASD gaming keys, whatever that means. It is this one which are uh, transparent, because uh, gaming, uh, you gotta know where your WASD keys are, so uh, there they are. We have a uh, very substantial touchpad, which again, it is very cool to see. You have a lot of area to uh, scroll around with your uh, mouse, so uh, yeah. Again, it is another feature that, at least in my opinion, is very cool to see. If you're gonna make a uh, big laptop, just put a big touchpad in there, I don't know, and it is very precise, very smooth. It was a real pleasure to use it. Look at me complimenting a touchpad, but I don't know, man, I like it. I really enjoy working with it, so there's that. For sound, we have Dolby Atmos and some AI noise cancelling technology, built in array microphone, whatever the array means, but sure. It is a microphone, you can speak to it and it records the sound. And we have a two speaker system. They are not very loud, but again, I prefer it that way. And well, at least the sound sounds clear. It is faster, it is an option, and I like it. Working, uh, working together as a team. Greetings, welcome to another Decker Games. Due to PC building thing. For connectivity, we have uh, the aforementioned uh, LAN port. We also have uh, Wi Fi 6. We, obviously, we got uh, Bluetooth 5.1 with uh, range boost. Again, whatever that means. Wi Fi and Bluetooth. Pretty standard. Powering all this hardware, we have a 56 watt hour battery with uh, four cells. When it comes to weight, this. Uh, Laptop weighs in 2.4 kilograms or 5.29 pounds. As for measurements, we have 39.5 centimeters with 28.2 and 2.14 in thickness. Let us quickly take a look at some pre installed stuff. Here we have our task manager. Fortunately, we don't have a lot of crap running. We have uh, some ASUS software, the armory and stuff. As you can see, not a lot of stuff. In our startup, you can see some stuff that I've already installed. Here we have our AMD Ryzen 7 5800H with integrated Radeon graphics. Let's put this into logical processors. Here we have our 16 gigabytes of RAM, our SSD, our main GPU, our RTX 3050, and our integrated Radeon. Ah, yes, we have um, McAfee. Because uh, why not? I would prefer this to be optional during the Windows configuration. But, uh, well, you can always uninstall it if you want to. So, uh, sure, let's uh, close this. So, here we have uh, our computer with our 1 terabyte SSD. We have uh, 250 gigabytes available because I've already installed a um, few games to benchmark this thing. Let's open my, uh, my ASUS and, uh, well, there you go. It lets you know that uh, you have uh, three updates to do and it is cool 
to see uh, companies moving towards a um, all-in-one software package because if you want to uninstall it you can just do it in a, a couple of clicks and um, you don't have to browse for stuff that you don't want so uh, yeah I think it is cool to have again an uh, all-in-one app for your laptop and ASUS gives you this uh, chance to uh, diagnose your uh, machine which uh, again I think it is uh, one of the um, most interesting features from this software because well if you are a uh, novice user and you need some support well the uh, guys from the uh, other side of the line they can uh, ask you to run a uh, sort of test to uh, make some troubleshooting at a distance which again I think it is cool so uh, yeah I guess that's a thing we have some news and stuff again we have uh, our diagnosing or diagnosing tool which is cool 35% so uh, I don't know man I think it's cool a uh, MySUS all-in-one software so uh, yeah I don't know man I like it it is different it is all in one you don't have to uninstall stuff so uh, yeah there you go the MySUS software you can see the um, workload on your CPU and your GPU it is testing the uh, fan speeds and whatnot so uh, yeah and you have some trouble shooting at the bottom for uh, blue screens or the system is slow some uh, I don't know uh, RAM issues and stuff like that ah. I think it is cool for uh, troubleshooting. Let us check what else we got here. We also have the ASUS Armory Crate for uh, gamers because well it is very different. We have our CPU temperature and stuff. Uh, I don't know man, clock frequencies, RAM frequencies, storage, fan speeds and stuff like that. Here we have some system properties some presets for uh, energy saving and stuff like that some lightning here we have our resource monitor we have the or sync we also have some presets for visuals and uh, you also have a game library which is cool it scans for your games and stuff you can create some profiles again it is just a app from um, asus this one again more for gamers you can control your RGB and stuff so um, yeah speaking of RGB here we have our Harmony Crate Horror Creator well it needs an update so there you go your um, four independent keyboard RGB thingies where you can uh, address the RGB on your keyboard therefore the uh, addressable name <laughs> I guess and yeah you can uh, select different zones and put some uh, different effects on there yeah it is just uh, aesthetics but again it is cool it is a nice built machine so uh, you uh, better have some uh, nice RGB in there because uh, why not we have our Radeon software for the integrated graphics on uh, our 5800H. So yeah, we already have some info in there. And we have the um, NVIDIA control panel, which uh, doesn't want to open. Ah, there we are. Straight from the 90s, because, <laughs> because NVIDIA. Ah man, look at this uh, modern... I don't know man this modern user interface I don't know man NVIDIA stuck in the 90s so uh, sure I think that's pretty much it when it comes to uh, software so uh, yeah let's uh, I don't know man let's run a few games so a few videos back I um, did review the RTX 3050 non-TI from uh, ASUS and uh, this comes with an RTX 3050 Ti the mobile GPU obviously and I think it is cool to uh, or it would be cool 
to compare the numbers between both. Now, obviously, that a GPU running on a laptop, it will uh, depend on a, uh, a lot of factors like uh, the amount of wattage the manufacturer lets into the GPU, the uh, cooling system and uh, stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, usually a uh, GPU on a laptop is uh, significantly slower than a uh, full discrete GPU that you can put on your desktop, but still, I think it is cool. So uh, let's run a few benchmarks and compare the uh, desktop RTX 3050 with the uh, 3050 Ti on the uh, ROG Strix laptop. So we are going to take a look at 1080p because um, it is the maximum resolution on this desktop and we are going to compare the uh, RTX 3050 with the RTX 3050 Ti laptop GPU and let's kick things off with uh, Battlefield 5 which uh, on the uh, RTX 3050 for uh, desktops it gets an average of uh, 96.2 frames per second while the RTX 3050 Ti gets uh, 59 frames per second on average and uh, again all these numbers that we are going to see are averages I didn't went to the trouble to put some uh, 0.1 uh, lows and stuff like that it is just your average frames per second so uh, yeah next game on the list is Borderlands 3 and on the RTX 3050 we get um, 57 frames per second on average and uh, on the 3050 Ti laptop we get uh, 46 frames per second on average again slower than the uh, desktop GPU Next game is Control, a um, very demanding game. Ultra settings, DirectX 12, the RTX 3050 gets 61 frames per second on average, while the RTX 3050 Ti laptop gets 34 frames per second on average, which is um, barely half what the uh, desktop GPU can do, but uh, well, things are what they are. Next we have Cyberpunk 2077, Ultra Preset at high settings, the RTX 3050 gets 44 frames per second on average, while the 3050 Ti laptop gets 37 frames per second on average again, falling behind the desktop GPU. Next game on the list is Doom Eternal, running at medium settings, the RTX 3050 Ti laptop GPU gets 134 frames per second on average while the RTX 3050 gets 136 but these numbers were obtained with uh, ultra nightmare settings which the RTX 3050 Ti laptop cannot do because of its 4 gigabyte of VRAM limitation so uh, yeah that's a thing to uh, take in consideration in uh, games like uh, Doom Eternal which require a lot of VRAM the uh, 4 gigabytes on the 3050 Ti laptop, uh, they are just not enough for games like this. Next we have GTA 5 Max settings, the only DirectX 11 game on the list. The RTX 3050 gets uh, 146 frames per second on average, while the RTX 3050 Ti laptop gets 141 frames per second on average. We are pretty much CPU bound in here, because the uh, GTA 5 engine decides so, so uh, yeah, not a big difference. It's still a difference, but not a major one, again, because we are pretty much CPU bound on GTA 5. Next on the list we have Horizon Zero Dawn, Ultimate Quality, another DirectX 12 game, and the RTX 3050 gets 68 frames per second on average, while the RTX 3050 Ti laptop gets 41 frames per second on average. Final game on the list we have Shadow of the Tomb Raider, highest settings, another DirectX 12 game, and the RTX 3050 desktop gets a uh, average of 93 frames per second, while the RTX 3050 Ti laptop gets an average of 73 frames per second. It is uh, lower but uh, pretty much playable on this uh, laptop. Here we are back at my desk where I'm um, editing this video and at the same time um, 
thinking of some uh, final thoughts and to um, get one thing out of the way first, let's talk about the aesthetics, which is awesome. I believe this is a um, awesome looking PC or laptop. I don't know, man, the, the lines, they are slick. I like the um, ROG theme gradient on the, um, on the plastic and on the uh, top of the screen. The angles on the uh, hinges and stuff like that. This cut here, when you can close the uh, monitor and you can see the um, activity LEDs. I don't know, man. All around, it is an absolutely gorgeous laptop. So, uh, But uh, that's a matter of opinion. And in my opinion, it is absolutely gorgeous. So kudos to Asus for making such a beautiful laptop, such a beautiful gaming laptop. Because, I don't know. It's um, it is a gaming laptop, but uh, it is beautiful and modest slash professional at the same time. So yeah, I really enjoy the aesthetics. When it comes to the hardware, it is uh, fast all around. It has a fast CPU, fast RAM, fast storage with, with your NVMe and stuff like that. The RAM is expandable, of course, but um, then we get to the graphics, to the GPU, not the iGPU, the RTX 3050 Ti, Ti which has um, 4 GB of uh, VRAM when the uh, desktop version has 8. So that's a cool feature. Not only the screen goes off, because uh, we are running on battery, but uh, before the screen went off, the RGB lightning went off because I was not using the machine, which is uh, well thought, but as I was saying, the desktop version of the RTX 3050 has 8 gigabytes of, RAM, of VRAM. I don't know why manufacturers do this. They cut the VRAM in half. It doesn't make a lot of sense, but uh, sure. So you get those numbers that we just saw, but, and this is a big but, all those numbers were without the LSS. You can activate NVIDIA DLSS technology and get like... Uh, 15% more on those numbers, so uh, that's a uh, thing to take in consideration if you want to use something like this for gaming. So DLSS should uh, definitely be on because it is an option and you should uh, totally use it. Now, would I recommend this? I um, don't talk much about pricing because, well, if for one person this is expensive, for other, it, uh, it isn't, and I'm not comparing this with uh, another laptop. It is just a uh, single review, so uh, without the pricing in mind, I would say, or I would guess, um, yes, I would recommend it. If uh, it is within your budget, sure, it is, again, a very cool-looking laptop. It performs well all around, and uh, it is. A gaming laptop so uh, yeah make uh, of this what you uh, will if you enjoy this video leave it a thumbs up because i appreciate when your thumbs are up don't forget to subscribe to the channel down here click this subscribe button because your support really helps out the uh, channel you can follow me on social media if you want to on your brand new asus laptop it is perfect for social media as always thank you very much for watching this that you just did and until my next video please do take care